Don't Fear the Reaper, July 30th, July 31st. Yeah, okay, I'll tell him. An older woman is wearing the CPD dress uniform sent on a cell phone. Just got a call. A girl just got nabbed off the central of Montebello. Somehow one of the feds found out and got there a little late, though. So. See so you got this signing badge? Your folks and mine are on a spot now, but I don't need to tell you it's a little too late. Signing badge like at the clock. It was a miracle he was still awake, given that he was just shifting over from Eastern Time to Pacific Time, and was now here at 1 in the morning. With the rest of these yahoos arguing as to who was going to be the one the media would carry their assassin at the press conference tomorrow morning. The word had already been sent out, so there was no avoiding it. Yeah, Chief Justice, he told Lady Justice, the Carolina Chief of Police, but from what you just told me is that my people were on the scene first. I'm glad your folks were there, but as you can see, fat lot of good that did. Yeah, well, anything else y'all idiots too gonna bitch about? Carmelo Cherry, the sheriff of Equestria County, grumbled. He pushed back a dun colored Stetson while wearing the day uniform of the ECSD. Baz knew the man was effective at fighting crime, but he needed him on a personal level. The poser acted though he was a hang up Texas lawman, complete with accent. But Cormano was from New Hampshire. Villas are still down, and y'all just complaining about who's going to talk to the press. None of this shit would have happened in my country until Yahoo sent it my way. Iron Post, the sheriff of the neighboring Siskiyo County, grunted. As the first victim had been found in Sierra Six, and he'd been fighting as well. That bad, thought, it was turning out to be a mistake. What next? Frisco and L.A. go get north? Oh, shut up. Sealed scroll, the Equestria County District Attorney said grumbled. The four of you are so busy stepping on each other's toes, they all look delightfully autistic in spastics. Need I remind you that I already have one crisis on our hands, and this one is going to make it worse? Plus tomorrow, we've got the shows for the neighboring counties coming. So you three, get your shit straight and stop having a penis contest! Dollar, Vice Mayor of Canterlot, looked at the four. Scroll, he said. You could be just as bad. You've prioritized all this, all the little shit of late. What, trying to get a seat as a judge? Or afraid that one of your senior's ADAs is going to run against you in the next election? Come on, Tall, you know it's not like that. Scroll shot back. What about your fights with Calabaron? Isn't he going to say since that you are? Oh, and since Mayor's announced their plans to go for re-election, you're screwed there. Oh, fuck you, Scroll. Bats looked at the clock. Then his phone aside, saying to no one in particular, the body count's rising, folks. We better get things to do, do to the argue with each other. The doors to the conference room were thrown open, and a middle-aged woman with frazzled pink hair, partially dyed with gray, stormed in, her glasses half-fogged. Her opaline eyes looked red, as if she had been crying, but the look on her face was one of cold determination. She wore a sweatshirt and jeans, but for the look on her face, might as well have been dressed for she was ready for war. Mayor, Squirrel said. Baz knew the mayor's name was actually Mayor, Latin for C. But in a town with a name like Carolot, one played to one's strengths, so she often used Mayor, meaning horse, as an accessible pronunciation. Scroll, shut the fuck up! Mayor Mayor said coldly. She then faced the rest of them, slamming her hands on the table. She so looked at him with a baleful stare. I have spent the last 32 hours out of my mind with grief. Now I have to bury the man I've been married to for 30 years into my precious only child. Meanwhile, you're all bickering like a gaggle of prostitutes trying to see who gets the premium John. This shit ends now! In five minutes, you four so-called law enforcement officials will start crawling through every fucking nook and cranny from here to fucking Bunnyville, Oregon, Chico, and Horse Tube Bay. I want every goddamn tree checked and every drop of water in the river looked over. You! He said, pointing to scroll. We'll make sure you have so much as an iron tight case. I want the bastard that did this to choke on the words. And you, he said to order, will lead the conference. I don't give a goddamn bit about how the media savages you. Lives are more important than your goddamn Bruce Ego. And as for me, I'll try to find my husband's guns. And I'm going to wait until you catch this asshole. Then I'm going to bankrupt the city using every bullet we can buy on him. Because if you assholes get this fucked tar- get away, I will use all the bullets on you. She pulled away from the table. 
Now get the fuck out of my conference room, do your jobs, and I want all of you to lie the first thing in front of City Hall at 9.15. Got that? Meanwhile, back with Adagio. Casually lounging outside, or at least looking at, Adagio was still recovering from last night's cycling. She had already been up close for 36 hours, and while it was nothing to her, she knew it was degrading for her potential combat performance from the slight sarcasm she felt. Plus, the civilian clothing that she was forced to stay at duty in was nothing like her preferences. It seemed like it was bought in bulk from the cheapest store possible. For the untimed time in private, Dacia realized the mistake she made. She let her passes override her judgment, and this was the result. She wasn't cut out for her lifestyle. Not anymore. She was, as Sonata had put it, a normal girl in the normal world. Albeit one was specially trained. Maybe I should have followed my heart and said my stupid brain cells. Would have been free to this shit. She sat down on a step in front of the building she was in front of. Fuck! I could use a piece of Simon Shan's pizza right now. I'm gonna miss that. I'm gonna miss a lot of things. Hey, Dazzy! Arga, Adacia looked up to see Arga standing there, carrying a Chinese Type 5 that the old elder sister didn't know she had. You okay? What's with the Type 5? It belongs to Seaman Flood over at Echo Company. She asked if I could borrow, she could borrow my XK9, and in turn she let me diss. Personally, it's your typical PRC piece of shit. But I have my sidearms on me in case something happens, which it won't. Yeah, Adacia said. Caroline's too quiet of a town. Anyway, now that you dodged the question, could I tell me? Dazio nodded and said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I got us into this. I was stupid. I didn't listen to Maddie. Now here we are, in a place none of us wants to be. You're probably angry with me. I know Sonny is. Arya sat down next to her. Hey, Sonny's so sensitive. She's always been. But you're our fire team lead. No, I was your sister before I was your fire team leader, and I should have been that when you two needed me to be. Well, if it's any consolation, I don't hate you. I disagree with what you did, and I think we should have stayed civvy, but I don't hate you, sis. I don't either. Sonata came out of the darkness, carrying three sodas for them. She had her P90 slug around her shoulder. And I'm sorry I took it out on you, sis. It wasn't fair of me. Arya took the soda gratefully, but said nothing. This is for her sisters to sort it out. Adazio took it well. No, you are right. I should listen to my sisters, not because we're on the same team, but because I love you both. Arya puts her sister gently on the shoulder and leaned in, while Sonata merely grinned. Right until the clatter on the roof. Training took over, and the three immediately drew their guns. Who goes there? Adazio challenged. None of your fucking business, seamen. An all too familiar voice says three figures clad in black alt on the ground. To Adacio's sock, Contralo was now wearing the rank of Petty Officer, second class. Second layer, she noticed the other two had also been promoted, and now I ranked her. And that kind of zone would have carried a package over her shoulder that was rough the message of a person. It's my duty as a guard, so identify yourself, Adacio said to Contralo, knowing full well who she was. Besides, you're out of uniform, and nobody's allowed off base after lights out. Well, for status... I don't have to answer to you, Seaman Dazzle. I'm a petty officer now, and I'm returning from a mission authorized by the Skipper herself. So get the hell out of my way, or I'll have your ass cycle. I can do that now, you know. What's your authorization code? Arya challenged. If you have orders, you have a code. None of your fucking business, Blaze, Medley answered, her hand going to her sidearm. Now you three stand down, go play little guards. The big girls have business to do. Instead, Sonata pointed her weapon right at the three. You will give your code, understood? Ladies, count this. Stand down. Get down and walked into the light. And the three immediately stepped to attention. Had they been uniformed, they would have saluted. But as part of such a few, salutes were belayed on the premises. They don't have a code because I authorized to miss it myself, Seaman Dazzle. There was a time to have it entered the POD, so I came out here to give it to you myself. Dazio lowered her gun. Understood, ma'am. Looking at Charles, he said, From now on, your authorization code is Rhombus Delta 7. It'll be a permanent mission code with no expiry. Turning to Seaman Dazzles, he said, Entering the duty log for further reference. I'm ma'am. 
Returning her attention to the controller company, she said, Okay, let's get going. We're well overdue, and we have some other things to get out of the way. Katara grinned. Roger that, Skipper. Arya asked, What about their cargo? Katara went down. I'll clear it. I asked him not to pick it up. It's a ballistic something that the team will be using to practice assassination shots from a distance. For some reason, Arya didn't believe it, but she wasn't about to argue with her commanding officer. Understood, Captain. With that, she watched as the four of them walked off. When Medley turned her to Arya long enough to flip her off. Classy, Sonata replied. Okay, let's get back to work, Adagio told them both. We still have close to an hour until we leave. Let's make the most of it. Meanwhile, back with Sunset. Sunset woke up. She had that strange dream again. When dozens of people she knew asked her the same question. And she would die for them. And then finally herself asking the same thing. Or maybe it's my counterpart here in this world. Sunset mused for a second, then dismissed it. At this point, the girl had to be dead. After all, she spent time whenever she could trying to research her existence. I never found anything to indicate she moved or anything of that sort. Of course, she also hadn't trolled the local cemeteries for proof either. Either way, it was moot. Now. The ex-unicorn had an existence here. Had a family she loved and who loved her. Threads who thought the world of her. And she salvaged her reputation. Yeah, remember when we were doing that before this whole entire thing involving the sirens, secret espionage, and uh, magic? That was more than enough. She was, as far as everyone was concerned, the only Sunset Shimmer they needed to worry about. And that was fine by her. Sitting up, she noticed that the clock once again read 3 in the morning. Maybe it was coincidence. Maybe it was something else. But right now, there were other things on her mind. Noticing that both Octavia and Twilight were still asleep, she cast the appropriate spells, lit the Dragonfire Candle, and then called another cell phone once she only knew the number two. Sunset? Hi, Twy. She said, sitting down on her desk chair. Hello yourself, but why did you call me at this hour? Just felt like talking to someone, and there's only one pony I know who's up this time of night. Yeah, okay, you got me. I was just up researching study methods for Rainbow Dash. Rainbow? She doesn't seem to be the studying type, to be honest. Well, she has the written portion of the Wonderbolts test coming up, and she really wants to excel at it, so she asks us all for help. Sunset so heard her friend sire near her line. It's gone as well as you can imagine. She wasn't worried at first, but once I got across to her that she was going to fail, she didn't focus. I think she's got the point. But after Fluttershy's attempt to teach her to fire harpsicle play, it's not sinking in. Well, I think Rainbow's worried now. Well, I'm sure the other girls have ideas, right? Although I'm wondering if Raz's idea involves t unintended brainwashing, some intended commented. Oh, Raz is in town right now. She's actually in the Empire researching Sabra's mirror. Kane's let her have full access to Sabra's old records. So we're trying to track if we found ways to other mirrors in your world. That's a pretty terrifying concept, especially given the way the mirror doesn't exactly have the firmest grasp on space-time. She imagined Sombra marching over to Equestria, carrying a modern-day thermonuclear weapon. Just the thought made her wince. I know. While I was there, I read a book on Earth weapons, and frankly, you guys are way ahead of us. If it wasn't for magic, any hypothetical phase by humans would have gone badly. A second later, Twilight realized who she was talking to, and added a hasty, Um, no offense, Sonny. Done taken, some said commented. Seriously, though, humanity has a lot of regret built up in those weapons. Mainly... Many, like nukes, were intended to save lives by preventing a huge war from spiraling out of control. But now everyone has them, including people who shouldn't use them for honest purposes. That's worrisome. No more worrisome than any of the super weapons in Equestria. The elements, though with different effects, were one. And then there were the Celestial Spears. You know about the Spears? Twilight asked. Uh, yes. I was Celestial student too, you know, Sunset reminded the Alcorn. Sorry, forgot. She's never forgiven herself for creating them. Ever since the side effects caused the creation of the Celestial Ursus. Twice sighed again and said, So you have a point. We have weapons we create cre creating as well. But how do you know the bad guys won't use them? The same way you know the Celestial Spears won't be misused. They're under lock and key for the most part. Mostly in the hands of the world's most trustworthy people. On Earth, since the knowledge of creating them is pretty much public, 
another well-intentioned incident that went wrong. We had to worry about terrorists creating them. By the crust of crust, you had to worry about some mad point creating silver weapons. Or maybe a tribalist sneaking into the vault or... Look, can we talk about something else? You got me a little worried right now. You and me both, Twilight. So you didn't explain what was going on. From the disappearance of the triplets to the apparent serial killer in town. On the other end, the alicorn listened eagerly. And after a few minutes, Sunset could hear the scratching of something as Twilight hastily jotted down notes. On one hoof, this cultural observation to your world is fascinating, Sunny. But at the same time, you know, if the princess finds out about this, she's going to assist you return to Equestria. You're practically her daughter, after all. Yes, but I'm a grown mare. At least in terms of being a pony. And sometimes you have to let their foals go their own way. I know the princess worries about me and loves me. And I love her for that. But I am my own woman now. My own mare, too. And I have my life to lead. Whether it's here or there, and she knows I really wouldn't be happy there. This is where I belong. Susan could proudly hear the smile on her friend's face. Deathly spoken like the foster daughter of Princess Celestia. She'd be proud of you, you know? I know I am. Yes, you're going bless. Thanks, Twy. As the two talked of various things, eventually Twilight had to break the call as the sun began rising over the horizon. Sunset looked out her window and noticed the night was slowly giving way to day. After saying goodnight, Sunset hung the call and put out the candle. I crawled back into bed. A second later, Octavia sat up puzzled. I could have sworn Twilight Sunny was on the phone a second ago. But why did she say she was talking to Twilight? She's right here in between both of us. Curious. Still elsewhere. Her long red and purple hair flying everywhere. Ruby Tuesday, sans clothing, struggled against the bonds like her life depended on it. And it did. Let me go! Ruby screamed, pushing and pulling as much as she could, but to no avail. Well, she's what? Medley said, looking at Ruby's driver's license. 21 and she's got a body like a 13-year-old. Sad. Medley had pulled up her cap hat blouse and undershirt, taunting. Hey! In case you're wondering, these are what real tits look like. Kind of saw Dr. T. May on the head. Stay classy, med. Not my fault that grown-up little girls under a doubt, Crancy. <laughs> Medley said while shrugged. Colonel looked at the woman on the table, then back to her friends. Okay, you two lesbians don't get squirrely, okay? We got a job to do. She so looked back at the wim woman, then muttered. I wish that I knew what that was. Medley leaned forward, her chest still on display. Hey, want me to rub these on you so you know what they feel like? Contra face palm. Med, get back to uniform. I, I, Alto. She pulled down her tops down and tucked her undershirt back in. My, my. You, a voice said from nowhere, you do have an interesting party, seen in that. Too bad the same can be said about your victim. The three jumped at the sound of voice, revealed to be Tavine Wright and Katana Blast, both wearing ornate silk robes with several sizzles pouring out on them. Well, take the duds, Medley said, then sighted up to Tavine Wright. You can see my body any time. Can I see yours? Down, seaman, Katana barked. Medley immediately fell back in formation. Now, do you know why you're here? So, Medley can make an ass of herself hitting on your boyfriend, Captain? Not exactly, Katana smirked. However, you're going to kill that girl and drain her blood. Ruby, overhearing that, started screaming again. However, Define raised his hand and a yellow glow enveloped it. Second layer, Ruby threatening his harder. Early consumed by the panic, he lost her one major chance to summon help. I think I've had more than enough of that, Define told them. Well, he's a magician, Medley commented. Can your next trick be me? Seaman trance enough already, Control sighed. Yes, petty officer, she sighed. Her entertainment now done. You were saying, sir? Castle spoke up. As you can see, I injured myself performing the magic ritual needed to succeed in our future endeavors. As we are in a time chapel, I asked Captain Blass here for her best three silence. Utterly ruthless and willing to do whatever is needed. That would be us, sir, Control said. What's the plan? Easy. I give you a list of people to capture. 
and you stab them with the sword. He then held up the blade of balance and the blood of the girl's pure will drain into the cast. He had pointed at the cast of the damned. She is not. Her blood will turn into an acid and scorch everything around. That's not good. My ruin my perfect looks, Medley moaned. Can't be getting worse. Your brain's already must, Ganson commented. To which Medley stuck her tongue out at her teammate. Ah, oh, don't worry. I have a serum here to take care of that. He raced into a pocket in a robe, producing a half liter bottle containing fluid black and thick as oil, save for the throbbing pulse of green that occasionally premiered its death. This. Once you drink it, it'll give you undrained of powers and unending strength. It will, of course, protect you from any failed spells. You three will be invincible. He looks alive, Kelson observed. It's what magic is about, my dear. He told her with a white smile on his face. It doesn't follow any normal rules. Sir, what the hell? I'll be first. No one lives forever anyway. Cartel said, taking the bottle from his hand, hoping to stop her off and taking a sleep from the bottle. Ending the ball back to him, she wiped her mouth with the back of her hand and said, Eh, it's okay, but I can use a shut up. She never finished the sentence as her eyes widened as she clasped her knees as she started da- gagging, her pupils constricting as a terror came into her face. Alto! Medley shouted and worried, rushing to her friend's side. Consol's eyes narrowed as she raised her fist in anger. Trying to defiance, she snarled, I'm gonna! Seaman burst, stand down. Katara ordered, as for you, Seaman Trance, I strongly suggest you stay away from Petty Officer Rush now. But Captain- Oh, fuck! The Cyrus hopped away from her friend, with good timing too, as the start spies erupted from her back. Muscle mass exploded exponentially, practically ripping off her clothes as she were a discount She-Hulk. Her skin turned to pristine like scales, shaded red. Her eyes turned into that of a reptile's. Her fingers became claws. She reared back on her head, and the roar that bellowed was absolutely inhuman. The fine went bored. Katana's mind weighed the advantages of the new super soldier. Medley looked at her friend with worry, as though she was still stone-faced. A slight bead of sweat rolled down Katana's fa- face, indicating she too was worried. The roar turned to laughter, and with a speed and grace that no human could ever have, the nearly nude creature leapt to her feet. My god! This is better than sex, she cooed, though my clothing, it's going to be a little awkward running around naked. Medley eyed her friends nearby. I don't mind if you, Alto. Must your friend first always be first to always be sex, man? Hey, I'm the specialist in seduction missions, so I must always be prepared, Medley replied, matter of factly. If it wasn't for the fact that you and Candy are like my sisters, I'd do you both. I did not need to know that. In order to team out, Calzone asked, Does it hurt? Divine looked at her, A little bit of pain, but then awesome power will be yours. Medley looked at Contral's body. Yeah, that's probably fun and all, but I can't do my job if I look like a teenage fist instead of this sexy body. Petty officer rush, Katana ordered, focuses on returning to normal. On cue, Contral closed her eyes, let her breath become steady, and thought of herself as she normally looked. She felt her body turn and twist. As it did, she felt a shift of her body mass as she returned to normal. She felt slightly weaker as her muscles shrank to her original proportions. Claws retracted, spine shrank into the skin, and scales turned to flesh. When the feeling went away, she opened her eyes, holding her hand in front of her face. It was just back to normal. Looking good, Medley said with a grin. Feeling great, she said, though she was now conscious of her nudity. Was finally solved by removing his robe and handing it to her. Must have Contaro's gratitude. What was that? The first of something to come. He told her, You are now the first in history. The first to be a super soldier. The weapon used against your enemies. But to create more, I need your help. And it starts by killing that girl over there. When he scabbard to his side, he pulled out a silver long knife that looked warped, weathered, and somehow diseased. Are you ready? Katal took the blade, looked at the still struggling girl, who was horrified to realize what she had seen, and as he had been forgotten. Looking down at the blade, he asked, he asked the vine, So what next, sir? Octavia woke up, having a vivid dream of herself, lost in a black glass maze. 
While in the distance, she could see sunset and twilight walking away from her as if she didn't exist. In her dream, she screamed to no avail. While waking up, was felt a tap on her shoulder, and she turned to look. She shuddered. I don't want to want to see that again, she thought. At that moment, she swore she heard strings from a classical song, Kamenatori, fill her mind. She didn't know why, but she felt something very, very wrong. Hey, are you okay? Octavia turned to Sunset's direction. Oh, you see a vile demon and... Tavi, wake up! She felt herself shaking, waking up. She saw Sunset over her, concern ringing from her cyan eyes. It was just a dream, Octavia mused. Just a dream. As she sat up, Sunset looked at her. Hey, you okay? She asked. No, yeah, I had a nightmare. The raven hair me seized and told her cousin. I really don't want to talk about it right now. What's tiny? Went downstairs to get you some water, just in case. Sunset replied, You sure you're going to be fine? Yeah, she said, hugging Sunset. I'll be fine. And in her mind, a demonic voice sang the, the strains of commentary, roared along with the barks of black laughter and the screams of the dam. Yeah, I'll be fine. Meanwhile, back on Shiny. Shiny woke up to see his fiance almost dressed and out the door. She was slipping on her heart of the siren, more because it went with her outfit than anywhere else. Oh, you're up, she said with a smile. Yeah, the boss insisted I take a day off since I've been working nonstop. Don't really like the idea, but I'm not about to turn in sleep turn down sleeping in. She walked over to bed and sat by him. You need it, love. You look exhausted. I've always known you to go the extra mile, and your bosses know that as well. But it's not going to do you any good to hospitalize yourself. You're only 26. You need to take care of that body. So I can take care of your body later. She said with a smile. I still want you to take the gun with you in case something happens. Okay? Signing her insistent, reluctantly and ignoring his teasing. You know the rules. We're not authorized to carry them into the building. And I don't feel safe about leaving it in my car. Plus, if it tells us it's right. They're only other versions. She cooed, crossing his cheek. Yes. And a girl who wasn't was found dead yesterday. Shiny reminder. There's nothing that says they know the difference between who is and who isn't. See what damn. Sweetheart, I'm not going to live my life as if I could be a target at any minute. I mean, come on. I already have one death threat stemming from that case I handled six months ago. Yeah, from a guy behind bars that can't do anything but bluster. This is a little more serious. Yes, and I have every confidence you'll stop him. Go get some sleep and plan where we're having dinner tonight. Oh, and dress up. We should go out and relax tonight. I have a bad feeling it's going to be a very rough day for those of us at the office. Sure, he said, leaning back in bed. While he stood up, double-checking her clothing in the vanity mirror, he headed out the bedroom. A few minutes later, Shiny barely heard the front door to their apartment close. But it was the phone that woke him up. He was scrabbling back and forth for the phone. He finally slapped his hand on it. Grabbed and pulled it to his head. Yeah, it's armor. He slurred to the phone. Raz is sad. He heard Santa was voice over the line. But there was neither the useful mock for him she did, nor the typical weary military fight in her voice. Many days he sounded angry. Sandy, what's up? Do you have time to have breakfast? It's on late. Sonny set up at that. Sandalwood was not only notoriously anti mooring, but wanted company. She was Katie's best friend, but I gravitated more to him over the years due to the similarities of his job. What's wrong? Ah, I fucked up, Shiny. I fucked up it's gonna cost the girl her life. He was out of bed an instant. I'll meet you at IHOP, just off of I-5, okay? The one at 16th of Westland? Yeah, be careful. Meanwhile, back with Sonata. Hey, did you hear? Black team's moving out. Arya and Sonata were in the underground firing range that had been planned to be a locker room once. It was well shielded and whoever did the work got it set correctly, as if it were magic. Arya was currently under reins, but practicing her trusty bow and arrows to have her guns. Melee was to work stress off, but still it was important. He sure as hell couldn't do anything else. As with the excessive supply runs and long patrols, they were confined to base. Sis, I don't care what those three assholes do. Arya no said, knocking her bow, drawing, letting the shaft fly. It billowed forward, the shaft rotating in tight, undulating circles until it met its mark. The bullseye in the head, right in between the eyes. She reached her quiver, grabbed another arrow, and ready to do the scene. 
I don't trust them, Sonata said matter of factly. Neither do I. That's why I don't care about them, Arya told her. Besides, if you want to fill your free time with gossip just because we have nothing left in our lives, that's up to you. As for me, I'm going to keep going to master my weapons until I'm perfect at them. Is that all you want to do with your life? It's all I can do with my existence. Arya turned to look at her sister. The look on her eyes was somewhere between anger, sorrow, and stoicism. My life ended the day I made the mistake that we're still paying for. She sat down the bow and arrow, moved away from her station, crawling under the counter and walking towards the bullseye to confront their arrows. Sonata, not sure what else to say, left her sister to her own devices. When Arya was in a funk, she preferred to work things out by herself, as having others around made it worse. Strangely enough, there were two exceptions in that world, and those two exceptions were pro we'd probably never see again. Apple Jack and Rainbow Dash. You did your, you did your best, a voice said. As Sanaa felt a hand patting on her shoulder, she turned to see Arya sure, Vesper. But then I will not undo you right now, Sonny. Vesper reminded her kindly, so you don't have to call me by rank. Besides, I know how you feel right now. You do want to do everything for your sister, and you feel helpless. The one thing you can't do is rewind the clock. Fester sighed. Mezzo, Maddie, and I talked. We should never let you decide to come with us. You three don't belong here. Vesper, I... You girls are strong. Probably the best I've ever seen for those your age. But you don't have the heart to be killers. That's why you three weren't selected for the black team. Why your team's specialty is infiltration and collection. You're thieves, not murderers. Gee, that makes me feel so much better, Sonata drawled. These in the military sense. You sneak into places, grab intelligence and other things. I'm not accusing you of anything. Vesper released a smile from her face and asked, If you were to, could you kill Maddie? No, are you shitting me? Hell no! What about your friends? Sunset, Pinky, or... Friend shaking her head while she answered her own. Do you know yourself? You're not meant to be so to Sonata. As rude as it seems to me to say... Having you three brought into the siren program was probably the biggest mistake the Admiral made. We would have died otherwise. No, you likely would have been left in an orphanage in Vancouver until you three were adopted. Maybe you three would be attending high school in West Bay, living normal lives with your adopted parents. You could never know the future.